we work so you can play. Hi, this is Matthew from MiniWarGaming.com, and this video is going to be an introduction to Warhammer Fantasy. Now we're going to be doing the 8th edition rules because they're the ones that are coming out this Saturday. So by the time you watch this video, the 8th edition rules will have probably already long been out. So that is what is currently being played. And I want to show you in this video the basics behind the game. So if you already know how to play Fantasy, even if you're just a beginner and only played a few games, this video is going to be too basic for you because I'm not even going to go into all the special rules and all the, the extra things. I'm even going to be leaving out the magic rules right now because they're a bit more complicated. So if you are if you already played a few games, this might not be for you, but if you're looking to play Warhammer Fantasy and you're trying to kind of see how it works and how the game plays, then this is perfect for you. So just sit back and relax and I'm going to show you the basics of how to play Warhammer Fantasy. Now before we get started, it's important that you know what you need in order to play. The first thing that you are going to need, of course, is the Warhammer rulebook. This video is not going to show you enough of the rules that you're really going to be able to play without having the rulebook. Now there's two ways to get this. First off, you can just buy the, the hardcover rulebook. This is quite huge, as you can see. Don't be intimidated by its size. The rules only really cover this much of the book. The rest of it is stories and more about the armies and more about the hobby and how to paint, how to do special scenarios and all of that. But the core rules um, are only a small portion of the book. The other way you can do it is to get the starter set as well for Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, if you're watching this before September of 2010, then it's not out yet because they're coming out with a new one. It used to be Battle for Skull Pass. If you're watching this after September, there is a link below this video description that should point right to the new starter set that has come out. And if you've watched the How to Play Warhammer 40k video, you know that there was the Assault on Black Reach, and it comes with a small soft cover book. Well, this one will do the same thing. It also comes with two really good starter armies if you're just looking to get into it and experiment a bit. So you need your Warhammer rule book. You also need your army-specific army book. Now I play Tomb Kings, and so I have the Tomb Kings army book. This is significantly smaller than a rule book because it just covers your units and your special rules for your army. But you do need this. There is a program called Army Builder, which allows you to create your rosters and calculate points and everything and shows you all the, the statistics of your units, but it will not replace your army book because it won't show you all the special rules. And also your army book can be a lot easier to go through and figure things out. You're also going to need a measuring tape, just like with Warhammer 40k. You're also going to need six-sided dice, and quite a few of them too, depending on the army that you play. There's also a couple special dice that Games Workshop makes. They have a scatter die, which has a hit marker on two sides and then arrows. So you roll this and it tells you basically where something scatters. And we have what's called an artillery die. This is used for your artillery such as stone throwers and cannons. And so it has two, four, six, eight, ten, and a mishap roll. That's usually when the cannon misfires or is destroyed or something happens like that. We're not going to be using the scatter die or the artillery die in our demonstration today because we're not using any artillery. We're just going to be using two very basic units. So these are the two squads that we are going to be playing with. Over here we have one of my Tomb King skeleton squads. There is a group of 20 of them here. And in the front there is a standard bear, the guy that's holding this standard. He gives a special rule in combat that you're going to see. And there's also a musician, which also gives a special rule in combat that you're going to see. Over on the other side, we have a group of Dark Elf Corsairs. And they also have a standard bearer and a musician as well. And there's just ten of them. I notice that these are all in movement trays. The movement trays allow you to pick up or move them all together. Because unlike other games, where the squad formations are a little more loose, in Warhammer Fantasy, the way your squads move around is a very important part of the game, as you're going to see once we do the movement phase. So it's a lot easier if you put them into their own movement trays to get them around. Otherwise, you're going to be spending a lot of time moving your miniatures individually and keeping them together. So that's different in that way. Now, in this case, I chose two groups that do not have any shooting abilities. So they don't have any bows or crossbows or guns or anything like that. Uh, that's just to simplify it a bit. We're just going to be focusing on movement and on close combat. Shooting is actually pretty straightforward in fantasy. It's the movement and close combat that has a bit more complexity to it. I'm also going to choose to ignore most of the special rules of these armies, because in reality the Tomb Kings could not just have one group of skeletons, and they need a certain priest who keeps the skeletons alive. So we're just going to ignore some of the special rules for the sake of making this 
how to play Warhammer Fantasy tutorial work a little easier. So just keep that in mind if you are an experienced player and you're watching this, that I am leaving out some of the rules as well. Basically, like many other war games, Warhammer Fantasy consists of turns. Each player does all of their things in their turn before the other player goes. Unlike most other war games, actually, in Warhammer Fantasy 8th Edition, Games Workshop decided to change the rule about pre-measuring. Most other war games, such as Warhammer Fantasy or Lord of the Rings, um, or some others as well, will tell you that before you can measure distances, such as charging or shooting, you must declare what you're going to do. You're going to say, I'm going to shoot at him, and then you go and you measure, and if you're out of range, if it's they're further away than your guns or bows can shoot, then you're out of luck. It counts as you shooting and just missing. In Warhammer Fantasy, there's no rule about pre-measuring. Well, actually, the only rule is that you can do it whenever you want. You can measure before you say you're going to do things, you can measure during your opponent's turn, so you never have to guess distances. There is still some variability to it, but not in the measuring. So at any point, I could sit here and measure and say, oh, they're almost, they're just about 16 inches apart from each other, and there's nothing wrong with me doing that. So just keep that in mind as we play, and as you play Warhammer Fantasy, because that's a key thing to be able to measure before you declare what you're going to do. I'm gonna have the Tomb Kings go first, and what they basically have to do is there's four phases to each turn. We're gonna be ignoring two of these phases, but we'll still I'll still tell you what they are. First is the movement phase, where you charge, you move, you just you reform your guys. Second is the magic phase, which we are going to be ignoring, just for the sake of simplicity, because the magic rules actually require their own video. Third is the shooting phase, in which all bows and guns and cannons and stone throwers do their shooting. And the fourth is the close combat phase, where charges are resolved, as well as um, any close combats that are, that are still there from previous rounds. So, I'm going to have the Tomb Kings go first to show you through these different stages. We're only going to be focusing on movement and close combat. Like I said, there's no shooting in here. Thank you. 